Mahendra. All systems going to be a cooling system. Today I'm going to talk about temperature proportional only controller. That's the outline for my presentation. First of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about the background of our system. And next, we're going to talk about the our steady state operating curve. And next, I'm going to talk about the relay feedback we have and the temperature proportional only controller graph analysis. And the last will be the conclusion. Okay, this is the background of our cooling system. We have two heater and a temperature sensor between us. That's basically the model we have, and that's the heater. That's a block diagram for our system. We have the temperature running in the input motor power, and the output will be the temperature. This is the steady state operating curve for our system. This Today I'm going to talk about the region about 40 to 60, maybe about 50%. This is a graph for the system at the 50% input, where the input runs at 50%, and at, this is the output of the temperature where it goes to steady state after running for 120 seconds. And that's the graph for the relay feedback response we have. When we run the region about 58% power, we have our M input, the delta M for 20% and a delta C of 29 Celsius. That's the equation for KC, the ultimate gain we have for this region and calculated and got a 90% per Celsius. That's the ultimate period for this system is 1.25 seconds per cycle. This is a graph that I have when I run it, the region for at 57. Celsius and I find my M bar to be 57 Celsius. When the KC, I set it at zero. We have a negative gain. I set it at negative 90 for the ultimate gain and run it with the M bar 57. And I got basically this graph oscillates infinitely, so uh, this is our ultimate gain. This is just a zoom in for the graph before it, that's the negative 90% per Celsius. And I found that the decay ratio is 0.7. and it oscillates infinitely, and the settling time is like 44 seconds for it, and there's no offset, and it has like 20% offshoot here. When I get the negative 90, that's our ultimate gain, and times it by 0.7, I get the gain for negative 63, where I put in the value for our gain at this input value. I run it at 57 Celsius. And the experiment runs as it goes towards the end. It kind of reaches steady state with no offset. And a second time about 27 seconds. I have an overshoot about 19% with the decay ratio of 
for the one tenth decay, I typed the negative 90 with the 0 0.5, and I got negative 45, and I run it with 57, that's my M bar. This system settles about 15 seconds to reach the steady state, and there is zero offset and a 18% of offshoot, overshoot right there. And when it goes steady state, the graph goes monotonic. That's the 1500 decay for our system. I times it negative 90 with the 0.25 and get a negative 18. And the system can go monotonic when it runs for about 240 seconds and has a settling time of 15 seconds and an offset of 0.2 and has an offshoot of 19% right here and a decay ratio of 0.2. This is the critical decay for our system at 50% input. That's the MR running and Again, I use a negative 90 times the 0 0.02 and then a negative 4.5. And I found that it's a zero decay ratio. And when the system goes to the end, it kind of reaches the steady state and it's monotonic. It's zero offset and a settling time of 40 seconds. And it has no offshoot. I mean, overshoot. This is the conclusion of the result I have for a 50% input level. That's the source of KC that I used that I timed it with the negative 90. That's the ultimate gain we have and get this number. I found that the decay ratio, 0 0.7, 0 0.14, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, and 0. From the result right here, we can see that the settling times goes it's gradually decreasing, but it increases like at the end of that critical, at the end of this, I mean, at the critical decay response. And the system has nearly no offshoot at 50% input level, and the offshoot it's ranges between. 18 to 20 percent and a zero offshoot at the critical decay. We run the system, we have like 50 percent input and a 60, 70, and 80 in between that up. And bar has 57, 51.5, 52, 48. Shows that the, the end bar for the system as the power level decrease, increases, the M bar decreases. That's a comparison between the theoretical and the experimental data. For that ultimate gain, that's an error. It, should, it was like 0.7, which has a Eighty-five percent error, and we see a huge difference when the system at the quarter decay response that has like the twenty percent off, and at the one tenth decay response that has nearly no error, and at the one five hundred decay response that has like ten percent error and at the critical decay the system the decay ratio goes zero and half off like it ten percent. That's the conclusion we have for the cooling system. The ultimate gain we found it to be negative 90% per 